Hey, what's up everybody? This is Tom from Deep Video Live. Thank you for tuning in. We're here on location at the historic Halton Theater, my absolute favorite venue in the Metroplex. And we're joined right now by a good a staple in the scene, Brian Idell. Uh, tell us, what is the role that you play in the local scene nowadays? Because I've been seeing your name all over the fucking place for a while now, and I'm glad I finally got the chance to shoot the shit with you a little bit. I'm an asshole, or uh, excuse me, I'm a promoter. I uh, book and promote local and regional and national bands. Mm -hmm. A lot of my shows come here to Halton Theater because it's convenient. It's mid-city, not mid-city. Like, you're 30 minutes from downtown Dallas. You're 30 minutes from fucking Fort Worth, if that. You're 30 minutes from fucking Euless. Like, you're everywhere within 30 minutes. Fucking Slayer. Fucking Slayer. Fucking Slayer. <laughs> they will not be here anytime fucking soon. Hopefully not. <laughs> but you never fucking know. Um, I've, I've been at this for fucking, what year is it? 2024. 17 years right now. As of last December. And uh, it's an addiction that I don't want to get rid of. Why would you? I don't have an answer for that, honestly. <laughs> ah, stumped him. But yeah, uh, give, uh, give us your perspective on the, uh, the the ebbs and flows, the highs and lows that the scene has gone through the past few years. Because there's been such a marked landscape pre and post COVID that I'm I'm fascinated by, and I'd love to hear your perspective on that. So COVID is a fucking bitch. Yeah. It happened. It happens to this day still. With a venue the size of Haltom, I was able to do shows because capacities. A thousand people, twelve hundred depends on the day and who the fuck you know. So even with it being at half capacity of five hundred at a thousand, I was able to bring in anybody that I wanted to because it made sense. So being here doing that, I got a lot of flack for it because how dare you do shows? How dare you not want to stay at home and make nobody money? Yeah. And I was always like, okay, well, how do I feed the, the staff? Yeah. Like, it's not my responsibility, obviously, but like, if I'm gonna feed myself working, why can't I help feed the staff at the same fucking time and keep the bands here active? Yeah. Within reason, of course, like, and I was, I was doing shows and I was never like, you know, hey, fucking do a show. It was like, hey, if you wanna fucking do a show, Let's fucking go. We can put it at Haltom. It's huge. It's fun to fill up, but it's huge. So even at, again, half capacity, we can be safe yeah. and do a show. And then you look at tonight, a thousand people, roughly, yeah. give or take, I don't know, a hundred or so. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty close. Chad's telling me there's going to be like a thousand people here. So I'm like, okay, so COVID's come, COVID's gone. It's been roughly four years. <laughs> and the venue's at a thousand people. And not everybody can do that because of size, obviously. But when you have a venue the size of Haltom, bringing a thousand fucking people, that's what you as a fan, ignore the fact that I'm a promoter, I'm a fucking fan, first and foremost. Same, yeah. Same obviously. I want to see a thousand fucking kids here. Yeah. My show, your show, their show, it doesn't matter whose fucking show, it's that fact that there's a fucking thousand fucking people here tonight, yeah. right now, supporting tonight 13 fucking local bands from Dallas, Texas, from Fort Worth, from DFW as a whole. Yeah. And I don't know that four years ago you could have done that bullshit. No, it was a, it, it would have been impossible back then, but you know, you could still take a calculated risk back then. There's an argument to be made for it either way, and honestly, both positions are valid. It's just kind of up to your perspective, but the point is the gamble really seems to have paid off, and I'm sure there's tons of people that are grateful for that, for you and for all the other promoters that have taken that gamble. Nobody's not taking the gamble. That's the thing. Like, third string, uh, myself, everybody that took the gamble, took the gamble years ago. I'm in the 17 years. Third string in this fucking 20 years with Mike being active as Mike Zemer in third string. There's guys doing it now who've been active for like fucking three years, four years. There's guys doing it for fucking like a last year. So it's like everybody's active. We know that it's going to take a risk no matter what. Either you fucking do it or you fucking don't. At this point in time, can you afford not to? 
That's a great. That's a great question. Some people do. Some people don't. If you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. But if you don't, you're missing out. That's a great way to put it. Like, I support myself. I do this shit independently. I'm my own motherfucking person. But I recognize and support everybody who's out there fucking hustling and grinding and doing their fucking thing. Whether you're a promoter or a band or a label or an agent or just you, a guy who wants to come out and support the fucking yeah. scene. Have some fucking beers. Smoke some fucking weed if you smoke some fucking weed. Fucking live it up. Yeah. You only live once. I'm going to die at some point in time, one day eventually. Yeah. So will you. It happens. Yeah. But why not come out and support the local fucking scene? Yeah, why not? And if you don't support the local scene, like, oh, hey, well, fucking, let me go out come to town. Like, you're right. Let me go out come to town at some point in time. But tickets will be 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 70 bucks. Mm -hmm. Tonight's 15 bucks in advance, 20 at the fucking door. And for fucking 20 bucks, you're getting 13 fucking bands. And a great turnout. A phenomenal turnout. Fucking cheap drinks helps, mind you, but we're here to support the local scene. Without people like me, Third String, Noise Rot, uh, D.I.E., anybody else who's out there doing it, the scene will die. Yeah. Without venues like Haltom, who support and want to build the scene, it will die. Yeah. So why not come to places like Haltom or Growl or Trees or Reno's or any other fucking venue where you can come out, thrash, mosh, drink. Just have a good time. Exactly. Have a fucking good time. Why the fuck not? And speaking of having a good time, that, uh, that'll be my segue into the, our next and last question, which we should be able to get a good back and forth going on. So uh, give us some good, like, uh, either horror stories or, like, some good, like, legendary memories that you have. Like, say the something that you're cool with saying on camera, but there's, oh God. Uh, there's, there's stories abound, I'm sure. So let's give somebody a peek into that. So years ago, I couldn't even fucking tell you when it was anymore because I've, I've, it's been years I got an offer for a band called Bolt out of Sweden. That's B-U-L-T. Okay. But Bolt. Mm. They were like, hey, we're coming to Austin for South by Southwest. We need a Dallas day. We're going to lose money no matter what because we're from Sweden. Mm. It happens. You're from yeah. Sweden. You're not doing... There's, no, there's no money in that. <laughs> Unless you're doing like a fucking 90-day fucking run. They were doing maybe a week of shows yeah. to get to and from Austin and back home to Sweden. So I booked them at Reno Shop Shop in Dallas years ago. Mm -hmm. It was a, was it a Friday? I don't even fucking know what night it was. It might have been a Sunday. I don't fucking know anymore. That's the problem. I don't fucking know anymore. Who cares about days? Exactly. <laughs> they were all cool as shit. We were all drinking, having a good time. At this point in time, Reno's had this fucking patio built into the lot adjacent to Reno's. And we're between sets drinking, doing our thing, bullshitting, having a good time. And some drunk bitch runs into the fucking mom van that they had oh, rented. Oh, like no. they had bought or bought, rented a soccer mom van to get to and from the venues on the yeah. run that they were doing. So it's, it's a fucking mom van with fucking no gear in the back, but a mom van because, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, and we're all looking like, what the, did I just hear that, like the fuck, what? What the fuck did... <laughs> so we figure out, like, you know, hey, they got hit. Because we know somebody got hit. We don't know who the fuck it was yet. I'm like, wait a minute, that's, that's, our, va oh, that's our van. And we're fucking from Sweden. Yeah. Like, I hope you have insurance on it. Like, well, we got it covered. We're good. But, like, what the okay. fuck? I was just going to say, did they? But, yeah, good. Like, as far as I know, it was all covered in the long run. But I'm just like, how the fuck do you come out to Deep Ellum and run into a fucking van. Well, that you just answered your own question. It's Deep Ellum, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a parked van at that. <laughs> yeah, that, that doesn't matter. You're, you're not wrong, but I'm just like, okay, what the fuck? Like, how the fuck? But just rotten timing and, like, perfect aim. Exactly. I'm like, okay, so if it was me, my car, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? But no, you're from you're you're hitting the car, the van of a band from Sweden. I bet they were heartbroken. I mean, like it wasn't not drivable, so it was handled. Mm -hmm. 
but like of all the fucking cars to hit, you hit the one fucking van that did not belong to anybody per se. <laughs> but you know, the band from Sweden who's on a fucking five day fucking banger to come through Texas for fucking South by So What or South by Southwest. Like we're trying to get to and from Austin. Can you help me out tours? Mm-hmm. We're gonna lose money tour? Yeah, that's, uh, that's, and that's just one of many stories, I'm sure. Oh, so many fucking, so many stories. Yeah, it's, come to Dallas and you'll, you'll see. 